even the most careful driver can get into an accident. So it's important to look out for warning signs to prevent them when you can. And with type 1 diabetes, those warning signs usually mean that something's a little off with your blood glucose. I've said a couple times in this series that ideally, an average person's blood glucose should run between 4 to 10 millimoles most of the time, though that can vary. The goal of using insulin is to help you stay in your safe range. If you swerve below or above that range, there's a mismatch between how much insulin you're taking and how much your body needs. And that can get into dangerous territory, either hypoglycemia, meaning too little blood glucose, or hyperglycemia, meaning too much blood glucose. In either case, your body will tell you that something's off. When you have low blood glucose, like if you take too much insulin, you may experience scary symptoms like being shaky, sweaty, or hungry. They're all caused by your body releasing the hormone adrenaline to try and fix blood glucose levels in an emergency and to tell you to eat some freaking carbs. Hypoglycemia is dangerous because your brain needs glucose to work properly. And at levels around and below three millimoles, there's not enough energy to go around. So other symptoms include feeling tired, weak or confused, signs that your brain isn't in tip-top shape. When you have high blood glucose, like if you don't take enough insulin, you may experience some other not-so-fun symptoms, like being nauseated, feeling sluggish, or really thirsty. You usually start feeling bad above about 12 millimoles. Higher blood glucose levels after eating is expected, but hyperglycemia without food is dangerous because it's a sign of other biological things going wrong. Without enough insulin to let glucose into your cells, your body starts looking for other ways to fuel itself, like breaking down fats. That's not inherently a bad thing, but breaking down fats too fast creates a bunch of byproducts called ketones, which build up in your blood and throw off the chemical balance of your body. This can make you very sick very quickly because of a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis, which almost always needs to be treated in the hospital. It's important to look out for these unpleasant symptoms, but the best case scenario is avoiding these extremes. Just like you look out for potholes, traffic, or dangerous weather when you're driving, Try to pay attention to situations where you're at risk of dipping too low or too high. For example, you might be at risk of low blood glucose after some heavy exercise or when you're stressed or tired. You can confirm any suspicions by testing and lift yourself out of a slump by eating some fast-acting carbohydrates. On the other hand, you might be at risk of high blood glucose after eating a huge meal or if you forgot an insulin dose. If this is the case, you can balance out your system by calculating and taking a corrective dose of fast-acting bolus insulin. That being said, knowing these dangers exist doesn't mean that you should panic. Just like driving, accidents happen. But most people need to use a vehicle at some point to get where they need to go. The more comfortable you are behind the wheel, the more relaxed you will be. I'm not saying this is easy. Being too high or too low can be scary. The more you know what to look out for and how to avoid them, or to fix them quickly and safely, the more confident you'll be. So remember, you have the power to correct mistakes, test often, and adjust as soon as you feel something's wrong. Three key takeaways. Hypoglycemia happens below four millimoles per liter, and when your body and brain don't have enough glucose to function, so you might get shaky, sweaty, and hungry, or might find it hard to concentrate. Rising blood glucose levels, even when you're not eating, suggests you don't have enough insulin on board and may be an early warning for diabetic ketoacidosis. The best way to prevent these conditions is building good self-care habits and checking blood glucose often. We hope you found this episode helpful. Stay tuned for more.